There's a habit monster in my life. It is taking over everything. It's ruining my health, my wellness, my mood, and I can't seem to get rid of it, even though I really, really want to. Each morning, I am ambushed, and I have to fight for my life just to get past it. Do you have a habit monster like this in your life? One that you just can't seem to get rid of, even though you know it's bad for you, but you just keep giving in to the cravings? If you do, let me know in the comments what habit monster you're fighting. If you don't want to be specific, you can just use a monster emoji or type same, and then I'll know I'm not alone. You may have guessed that my habit monster is in fact, monster. I am addicted. There, I said it. Hello, my name is Crystal. I am a monster addict. Hi, Crystal. I've always known it's bad for me, and I've wanted to quit drinking it for years but I just haven't been able to muster the self-discipline to make it happen. So today, I'm gonna share with you my journey in slaying my habit monster, and I'll share with you the tips and tricks that worked for me along the way. Here's how it all started. I drank Mountain Dew for years. In college, I started my mornings with Mountain Dew, I survived my exams with Mountain Dew, and I carried it on into my teaching career. When my students would ask me what I wanted for Christmas, I would tell them to just bring me a Mountain Dew. So sad. I had no higher ambitions than to fuel my caffeine habit. Fast forward several years and I became a spin teacher and I decided that I had to set a good example and eliminate sugar from my diet. So I had a genius idea. I would replace my Mountain Dew with Monster. Soon I had to have one no matter what. When we traveled to Germany a few years ago, I almost had a meltdown because we couldn't find a Monster one morning. Not having a monster was turning me into a monster. I drank one a day, and then it became two a day, and eventually I snuck in three a day. Fast forward again, and one day not too long ago, I became aware of a strange pain all across my scalp, throbbing in my temples, a swollen feeling. When I pressed here, I could feel it in different parts of my head. It was very, very strange, and of course along with it, was an amazing headache that just wouldn't quit. Being the intelligent and independent woman that I am, I immediately Googled it. And Dr. Google told me to go see a real doctor immediately because it could be an arterial blockage that might cause me to go blind. So I finally got the courage to return to the doctor's office. And this time I hit the jackpot. I got a doctor who I'd never had before. He asked a lot of questions. He pulled some blood for blood work. He took my temperature several times, checked my blood pressure a bunch of times. And after all the discussion and all the testing, we determined that I am in fact experiencing migraines, but they are an unusual migraine with unusual symptoms that are not easily recognized, which is why I've been given the runaround for so many years. And following that good news, he gave me the bad news. I had to stop drinking Monster. It was like a stab to the heart. As I was driving to pick up my prescriptions, my thoughts just kept whirling around in my brain. Quit drinking Monster? I can't quit drinking Monster. I'm just gonna get more headaches from cutting out the caffeine. How am I gonna do this? I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And on and on and on the whole way home. This whole doctor experience gave me an undeniable external motivation for slaying my monster habit. But what if you don't have an external motivation like mine? Then you have to find your internal motivation. Why do you want to slay this habit monster? How is it negatively affecting your life? And how would your life be better if it was eliminated? A third way to find your motivation is through a social connection. This could be a challenge or contest, could be joining a support group or buddying up with a friend. One of my good friends inspired me to just jump in and I decided to film the process of slaying my monster habit. More about that friend in a little bit. Now, unfortunately, I didn't start filming on the very first day, but I don't think you missed much besides a bunch of complaining. I had this big plan for how I was gonna get up and show you a person who is awake first thing in the morning but it's 3 30 and I hate myself because I just can't sleep anymore but I don't want to be awake so I'm going to drink my nice crispy ice water read my Bible and 
and try to make something of this day. On the very first morning of monster slaying, <laughs> sounds so ridiculous. On the very first morning of monster slaying, I knew that I couldn't go cold turkey. I was terrified of the caffeine withdrawal headache on top of the migraine that I was already experiencing for the past several days. So I decided to step down. The monster that I had in my fridge was all the monster I got. No new monsters would be purchased. I immediately dropped down to one monster a day. And let me tell you, it's been excruciating. I tried all kinds of things during those first seven days to help me make it through this process. I tried drinking hot tea, having snacks, changing my routine. Nothing really seemed to make that sad moment any better. You know the one I'm talking about? That one when you take the last sip out of the can and you're so sad because you realize that you can't go get another one. This is the moment I have been dreading. That's it. Last sip. Now I have to actually drink water. Yikes. In talking with my friend that I mentioned earlier, she told me that she was trying to slay her Dr. Pepper habit. Every morning, she would wait and wait on pins and needles for the first moment that it was socially acceptable to drink a Dr. Pepper. Now me, I thought that was hilarious because in college, I started every day at 6.30 with a Mountain Dew. There is no socially unacceptable time to drink a pop, in my opinion. I thought it was hilarious, but it did get me to thinking, why are these habit monsters so difficult to get rid of? And how can I make the process easier? So I started to do some research into the science of addiction and habit, and I was overwhelmed. There's so much information out there, but I did find a few things that I thought would be helpful for me, and I wanna share those with you as I show you my journey. It's rough. The first thing that really stuck out to me is that being mindfully aware of your experience is the first step in empowering yourself to conquer your habit monster. What I mean is this, when you find yourself experiencing cravings or giving in to your habit monster, be hyper aware of the sensations you're experiencing. What do you taste? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What are you thinking? And just mentally examine every sensation that you're experiencing. There is just something about that sound that is so satisfying. Tangy, tart. The tartness of it kind of makes my eyes spring open a little bit, makes me feel awake. Love the bubbles. Something about the bubbles, man. Sounds like a bunch of hooey, doesn't it? But seriously, it really made me curious about why I was experiencing these sensations, which led me to the next point in my research. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the monster. I have four left after today. My deadline is approaching and I am not looking forward to it. I needed to become aware of my triggers or the root of the desire for monster. Our brains are hardwired to respond to negative and positive reinforcement. Basically, there's a trigger. It could be an external event or an internal need. We engage in a behavior to try to meet that need. If we are positively rewarded for that behavior, then we repeat that behavior. If we receive a negative consequence, then we're less likely to repeat that behavior in the future. Needless to say, food is a very powerful motivator. So each morning as I stumbled to the fridge to pull out my meager monster portion for the day, I had to consider what was causing me to stumble to the fridge in the first place. What positive reward was I seeking? Was it the taste of the monster? Was it the sound of the bubbles, the sound of the can opening? Was it the jump start for my brain? Why was I engaging in this behavior? Yeah, I think it's kind of the sweet but tart. I think that's what I, taste-wise, I think that's what I like about it. 
feeling wise, I love that it's so cold. Love that it's so cold. So, flavor, cold, bubbles. That's what I'm getting today. Now, there is nothing simple about a monster habit like mine. I have well grooved the path to the fridge over the years. Determining the root of why I wanted the monster was going to take some serious thinking. I'm not gonna lie, today is gonna be a tough one. I am fighting a headache. Um, hopefully it won't turn into a migraine. And I can tell that this is gonna be one of those days. <sighs> and now I'm trying to drop out my caffeine. Wow, this is gonna be great. Awesome. To be honest, I think it was a combination of all of these things, and I wasn't sure how I was going to get rid of them. So I decided to try different solutions one at a time and see which would be the most effective. Before I could be fully free from the habit monster that was haunting me, I would have to work out which of these was actually the root of the problem. One of the solutions I tried was to use a different carbonated beverage when I found myself craving something bubbly. Unfortunately, I chose to use soda pop, which is not a good replacement. The biggest problem was that I found myself sneaking pop at all hours of the day, and I ended up spiking my blood pressure and um, totally lost my train of thought now. I ended up spiking my blood pressure and giving myself heartburn for a few days. Not to mention the guilt that I experienced. So I learned quickly that I had to be very careful with what substitutions I tried. For example, another solution that I tried unintentionally is that I would find myself craving that sweet flavor burst. And so I would go and find a little sweet snack. Needless to say, that is not a sustainable habit long-term. You know what the results of that would be. So, I've been up for a while. I've been up for like two and a half hours. I don't know, maybe something like that. And I've now had my monster for about 45 minutes and I'm, I'm just sipping slowly. I'm milking it. I'm finding that I don't drink it as fast because I've already drinking, drinking? <laughs> I've already drank a bunch of water, um, so I, I'm I'm drinking it for the enjoyment of it rather than because I'm super thirsty for water. So that's helping. Um, but the other thing I'm finding, I just kind of had an epiphany here, is that as I drink this and it gets warmer and warmer and warmer, it's less appealing to me. As I shared in my video last week, I hate to fail more than anything else. And I have failed a lot of times in trying to find the self-discipline I needed to pick this monster habit. This led to feelings of guilt and shame and just plain a determination to ignore the whole problem in the hopes that it would go away and not have any real consequences. But this time, it's a matter of survival. I have to succeed in slaying my habit monster if I'm going to get rid of these migraines. Now, I haven't failed and bought more monster, but I have failed in trying some substitutions that weren't really healthy options, like the soda pop and the sweets that I previously mentioned. Rather than letting myself get discouraged and give up, I just had to be patient with myself and recognize that I'm not going to be perfect and that finding the perfect monster slaying weapon was going to take a little effort. This is my last monster. I am not allowed to buy any more. My last first sip. So after today, no more videos of me in my bathrobe. <laughs> I told you guys, you're gonna see the real me.
This is the real me at 4.50 a.m. I need to think about <clears throat> how I'm going to face tomorrow morning. <clears throat> what I'm going to do. Yeah, so far my routine every morning is that I, I go with my big glass of ice water and I drink a bunch of water so that I'm not super thirsty anymore. And I read my Bible and I write in my journal and then I come and I get my monster so that I can sip on it while I do whatever research I have to do for my next video and while I get my kids off to school. But what am I gonna do tomorrow? One of the tips that seemed to work the best for me was to reward myself for any positive movement in this journey. Now, obviously, I couldn't reward myself with sweets. We all know how that would turn out. So I had to find an alternate form of reward. And one of the things that I found worked the best is all thanks to you. So thank you for being here and watching this video today. Okay, I just got out of the shower because I'm trying to make myself feel motivated. And my hair is obviously not dried. I drived. Dri <laughs> my hair is obviously not dried and I still have no makeup on, etc., because my husband is still sleeping. I am dying for another monster. I acknowledge the craving. I feel the sensation. I'm breathing through it, and I'm going to reward myself by doing something positive that is a good behavior that I want to encourage and continue in myself. So here goes, gonna work on my YouTube script. I found that when I had a really strong craving for another monster, if I just acknowledged the sensations and then rewarded myself by doing a positive behavior that I wanted to encourage, then I could focus on something positive and ignore the cravings and they would go away. So I became a video making fiend. I spent hours on filming, editing, music, I just so much. I learned a lot of new a lot of new tips and tricks on how to make videos. So it's a two for one bonus. Okay, really, it's a three for one bonus. I got rid of my monster cravings. You get to see better videos and we have more content. So thank you for taking your precious time to watch this video. You are a big part of the reason that I was able to slay my monster habit. If you've watched my other videos, then you know that my goal in life is to hear what God is saying to me in everything I do. So what did he whisper to my heart in my efforts to slay my monster habit? Well, number one, having a monster habit does not define who you are. Number two, being attacked by a habit monster does not determine your value. You have value just because God created you. He created you as a unique individual and no one else is exactly like you. And he will use this battle against your habit monster to help you grow and learn and become something amazing. Number three, habit monsters do not have to control your life. Turn over control to God and trust him to help you control the habit. All along the way, I prayed for strength and courage to help me fight the battles. I prayed for wisdom to help me know which strategies would be the most effective. And I prayed for him to intervene daily in helping me to control the habit and take away the craving for the monster. Number four, don't try to slay your habit monster alone. Find someone to support you. For me, I had good friends who were encouraging me along the way. I had you to be here and watch my video. Thumbs up, by the way. And I also had my husband who also slayed his own monster habit and now he's drinking coffee instead. And the fifth and last thing that God whispered to my heart is that failing to slay your habit monster on the first try doesn't mean that you've lost the war. Don't give up, live to fight another day. With God by your side, you will be victorious. Bop the like button if this video was encouraging to you and leave a comment to encourage others who are fighting their habit monsters right alongside you. I'll see you next time.